All right, one week. Oh my God, I wish you guys could feel it. It is roasting in here. Oof, hot. These Toyotas, these old school Toyotas, man, these things handle heat. I'm always looking at them on uh, Phoenix, Arizona. You can see these old ones have absolutely roasted to death the last 30 years. I tell you, Toyota dashboards, these things are, God, listen to that buzzer. Oh, hear that? Amazon guy. Damn, smashing with the van door open? What? Yeah, that's perfect, dude. Have a good one. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So, uh, normally I like to wait till like five, six, seven o'clock at night on a beautiful day like this. It's uh, it's called the golden hour and it, it's, it just provides a wonderful lighting and atmosphere to film videos. Uh, but I, I'm actually feeling inspired right this moment. And, uh, and so I'm going to harness that. And I was trying to figure out why I feel inspired. And then I realized I think it's just because I, I drink a Red Bull. I, I don't drink these things a lot. So they still do something for me. And, uh, and I'm just, I'm just, I got things are flowing right now. So I figured let's just jump into it. Uh, believe it or not, after I upload a video, I don't really like to check it out for a couple days, see how, the, how it's doing, the statistics and all that, but I just looked at the comments uh, for the video I uploaded yesterday, and one of the last ones that somebody posted was, could you please do like a buying checklist uh, for buying a T100? And, uh, and that's actually something that's interesting because I would consider myself like an expert on buying vehicles. And this isn't just because I was born like this. No, my dad is like a master mechanic and, and an absolute vehicle nut. And ever since I was a kid, he was taking me to buy cars. And it's like, I mean, within 30 seconds of walking up to any vehicle, I, I can absolutely tell you whether it's good or not uh, just by looking at a few quick, easy things. And so uh, basically we're gonna do a mock buying transaction today on the T100. We're seriously gonna pretend like I'm pulling up to someone's house and, and I have about 20 minutes to check this thing out and, uh, and see if we wanna buy it or not. And so I'm gonna show you guys the top five things to look for. And you know what, th pretty much this goes for the same as a, as a Tacoma. Okay, first gen Tacoma, 95 to 04, um, pretty much the exact same vehicle as this, the five VZ engine, uh, almost the exact same thing. It just coil over front suspension, a couple little differences, but basically same drivetrain. And since it's a pickup, since it's a Toyota pickup and it's from the exact same generation, um, this video will include uh, first gen Tacomas, T100s, and basically pretty much any vehicle you go to look at. But these are the things you're gonna wanna look at when you first walk up to a vehicle. And I'm gonna, we're gonna pick the top five, basically, that you need to go over and, uh, and let's just get to it. So definitely not a cold start by any means because it's like 80 degrees today, but this thing was just sitting on the street for a week. You guys who uh, are familiar with my channel, I'm always either saying the Sequoia just sat for a week, 10 days, the T100 just sat for a week or 10 days. I never go back and forth. It's not like one day I drive the T100 and then I drive the Sequoia. I'm always like taking, like really dedicated to one for like a week or more and then, and then I go back to the other one. Anyways, I, I put the Sequoias over here uh, just to chill together while we film this video. Let's say, that I was going, God, how many times have we done this? You know, we filmed this on the channel um, a handful of times now where we went to go buy vehicles and it's, it's the most adrenaline pumping, neatest thing for me. I gotta tell you, it's just something special when you have cash money on hand and you're going to check out a vehicle and you're super excited about it. I mean, it's, it's literally a high that I, I can't even explain. I love it. I used to do it all the time. And as I get older, it's becoming more of a pain in the ass. So if I was driving to go look at this T100 right here, uh, and we pulled up and I saw it underneath this carport already in a driveway of a moderately decent house that's not a pile of crap of trash everywhere. And this would be like win number one right there. Cause you know, when you show up and it's like, there's just, there's already a few indicators. You know, another thing, you can literally just walk up to a truck and I'm not, I'm not trying to dog on people that do this, but you can just look back here. Most trucks you come back here and there's beer cans and uh, bungee cords, uh, WD-40 bottles, Miller Lite. Leave a comment down below. What would you find in a truck bed that would make you just want to run away? I don't even know what. I'll tell you what, if you look back here and you see empty, empty quarts of oil or empty jugs of antifreeze or power steering fluid or brake fluid, that's not a good sign. All right, so this is another thing I'd look at right when I walked up. Right when I walked up, I would just look underneath right here. I would just see if, if it's dripping on the ground and I would ask, hey, is this where the truck sits all the time? And they'd say, no, actually it sits on the street out here. And I'd probably walk out here real quick and just take a glance and you can see right there that it is dry. So that, that's just, that's one thing you're gonna wanna check out. Ask where it, it sleeps at night. 
and take a look underneath, okay? It'll tell you a pretty clear indicator if the thing's oozing any fluids. You get an idea. You can also see if the fluid's in the front of the parking spot, and it's probably come from the engine. And if it's coming from the middle of the vehicle, then it's probably the transmission. So that's another good indicator right there. We haven't even started on the, the big five yet, and we're already, we're getting kind of detailed here. I like this. So, okay, so we're here. We walk up, the guy comes out, you know, you text him, let him know you're here. The guy comes out, I say, hey, what's up, Greg or Tom or Steve or whatever. Uh, we shake hands, he goes, how was the drive over here? That oh, was wonderful, yeah, beautiful day. Yeah, it was a beautiful day, obviously, how you doing? Good, good, good. Yeah, where, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Santa Cruz, all right, where are you? Yeah, yeah. Anyways, make small talk for a minute, and then you go, oh yeah, so this is a really cool truck. Start making your way over. All right, so we get past the uh, small talk introduction with the seller. And, uh, and let's get on to our list of the five main things. Uh, and you know what, this is not, should, this is not number one where I'm from, but this is just number one in general. Look for rust. Rust, it can eat these things to death so quick. So uh, right above this back wheel arch right here, I'm at rust, will just start to bubble out in here. Listen, there's absolutely no shame whatsoever when you go to look at a vehicle uh, to bring a towel, and bring a flashlight. I don't like to use the uh, the flashlight on my cell phone. It doesn't provide good lighting. You can't get it in certain places. Just bring a real flashlight, bring a towel so you can lay underneath. It's no big deal to walk up to a vehicle and, and, and get into it and just get down and dirty, especially if you're gonna spend your hard earned money on it. Uh, look back here, um, just check out the frame. This leaf spring hanger right here in the back, uh, it'll just get eaten alive right above it. Look at the bottom of the frame right here and just and just follow it all the way up. You can fix body work, you can fix engine problems, you can pretty much fix anything. Uh, when rust gets to a certain point, there is nothing you can do about it. So I'm gonna say um, this is gonna be a huge deal breaker uh, in most instances if it has pretty bad rust. And if you can get an absolute smoking deal and it's just some surface rust, and you feel like gambling, then go for it. But, but if there are any severe rust issues, uh, I'm gonna say it's gonna be a deal breaker. Now, another place you're gonna wanna look for rust, and I made a mistake one time. I bought a 4Runner in the early 2000s, and I didn't notice it. And when I got home later on, it had rust in these channels right here. No rust right here. Go ahead and look in there. Also up here, for some really strange reason, it really likes to get the rust going. Nothing to follow it up here, none. Do the same on the other side. Cheap insurance, just to check it all out. Whatever you don't check out, you'll hate yourself for later if you find something. But, uh, so rust. This thing passes the rust test. So we are on to number two. Number two is check for major body repairs. I mean, has this thing been in a massive collision? Have the airbags been deployed? I mean, these are, these are good questions. And so like I was saying, uh, you can just start to see um, what's been repainted, what hasn't been repainted. And it's really hard to tell on certain vehicles. This looks factory. The hood right here looks factory. This fender looks factory. Uh, as you guys know, if you've been uh, on the channel for a while, this thing had a massive spot of, of Bondo that had lifted up and let water get in and it just 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 rotted this nasty little spot away. And it's one of the worst repairs I've ever seen. At some point, uh, this door had some repairs on it. And you can see right here, it's starting to split a little bit. Basically grinded it down to fresh metal, put in some Bondo, and then painted it just so it would stop it. Um, this thing kind of needs a new door over here. When I do run into a door under the right circumstances, I would probably just replace it. That's why I didn't go haywire on it, because you can tell it also has some issue up there. So I, I'd be a little concerned with this. now. As we, if we open this door up right here, you'll notice that it, it says Toyota down here. It has the actual uh, VIN sticker plate, completely factory. Um, so this is the factory door. This is the factory door, but it did have some repairs done. At some point, you can tell that the body lines are pretty straight on this door. It opens and closes without any issue. Window works well. Weather strippings all there. It looks good. This would definitely be an area of concern as long as the price is right. Maybe we could work something out with that. This looks fine. This piece looks fine right here. As we move to the back, you'll notice we have a, a massive body gap on this side and on this side, uh, a little tiny one. So definitely, definitely not correct right here. When you look down the side, the bed uh, aligns perfectly with the cab and the body lines are perfect on this side and they're also perfect on this side. 
So it's not obvious where you can tell that there was uh, some injury at some point. You can tell that the taillight doesn't fit. You can actually push it in a little bit right there. The tailgate is definitely... Yeah, you see how this side is, is super clean? It's just super clean. You can tell it's just one coat of factory paint. And if you go over to this side, you can see a bunch of little like boogers of adhesive and a, a just absolutely not factory paint. So it's definitely something happened over there. That is the factory tailgate. When I bought it, the uh, it had no hinges on it. So it was resting against the bumper uh, when it was going down. And so that's where that came from. It would have been nice if I owned it and could have stopped that from happening. So no issues uh, on this side. Again, no issues here as we come over to this door. Yeah, we have the factory VIN sticker right there, but you can tell it's been repainted. You can tell it's been taped off and repainted. It is the factory door. But it definitely has been repainted. And then we go up to this fender, which is uh, a horrible, horrible home job that I have nothing to do with. That's how I got it. All right, let's talk about something else here. Let's talk about the glass. You see how it says Toyota in the glass right there? So it says Toyota in that glass. Uh, it says FY, so it's a replacement front windshield, which is totally fine. There's no way I thought the factory windshield would uh, still be around for 25 years. Toyota emblem there. Toyota emblem there. We replaced the back window, because when I bought it, it was broken out and had a piece of plexiglass. And last but not least, this is a PPG. All right, so let's quickly go over what we've learned about this vehicle. All right, this door right here has had some major repairs done to it. This is factory, this is factory, tailgate is factory. I believe this side was replaced or repaired and has been repainted. This has been repainted, this door has been repainted, this piece of glass has been replaced, the windshield has been replaced, <laughs> this right here has been fixed and I don't believe that this collision was at the same time as this collision. So uh, it's that so far we know of two collisions. As we move around to the front, I do believe this is the factory front bumper, but let's open the hood and take a deeper look. Factory VIN sticker. We actually have the two factory stickers that came on it. That actually looks like factory paint right there. This is an actual Toyota OEM hood. I'm not sure if it's the OEM hood that came with the truck or not. Now, one thing that's interesting is that the truck is green, but this uh, radiator support right here is black, uh, but the whole engine bay is black. So I'm pretty sure that all T100 engine bays are black despite the color. Fellow T100 owners, please go outside and look. Uh, the Forerunners from 1996 uh, to 2002 that have the same engine for some weird reason. And some of the early Tacomas too, the first gen, they have a huge insulated under hood um, insulation piece. And, uh, and I wonder why this truck doesn't. Is it supposed to? I don't know. That's another question out there you guys can help me with. Does anybody else have a T100 that has a huge insulation piece of fabric or whatever underneath the hood? Anyways, so this is the factory radiator support. So there's just no telling uh, what has happened to this vehicle. I mean, I see terrible overspray right there. You can see the primer right here this truck definitely has been in a couple collisions there's no doubt about that and this hood right here even though it's the oem hood or a oem hood uh why is it crunched in the corner right here what what what's the story right here and did it smash out the grill and the headlight that were behind it when that happened is this a, an aftermarket i mean i replaced these i know that this was the grill that was on it when i got it but there is there is no talent now something that's super important to me is this airbag right here. I really like to have an airbag and I know it's kind of selfish too. It only has a driver airbag. I mean, right before the collision, you look over at your passenger and go, sorry, but uh, driver's side airbag, first year, I believe it was 1994 in the T100. And as we've discussed in an earlier video, everybody has confidence, including myself, that this thing still works. There's no airbag light on the dashboard. Uh, the truck does have a clean title. So although it's been in some, uh, some collisions. I do believe that the airbag's never been deployed. As we looked at before, we already went over the whole frame. The frame looks good, it's straight. This thing's never 
been in a hard enough collision where it's done anything more than just require some paint and some some bondo or whatnot but this thing actually passes number two and that is looking for major repairs checking out the body lines number three is it's time to go over the actual drivetrain engine trans talk about maintenance and one thing i want to mention is if you are lucky enough to go to look at the vehicle with like a friend or family member or whatever then hopefully that person can like distract the owner enough where you can you can move quick now we're moving kind of slow looking at the body lines and doing this but but if i have just a few moments i move super quick around the vehicle and just check these things out but moving on to three drivetrain i was actually going to pull out my creeper and slide underneath but you know what we're just going to pretend i'm in someone else's driveway and i'm going to show you exactly what i would do right now what's up bro what's going on more packages all right so check it out everybody got my flashlight and again i'm not expecting you know some crazy tactical flashlight or anything like that that's why i'm using a real world ever ready it is an led cheap flashlight if the truck is a manual transmission truck really quick you want to go up here and just look at the back of the clutch pedal and just get a good look right here up at the uh at the master and just see if it's leaking it'll be leaking right down where that rod goes through the firewall right there not that expensive of a repair but uh if you can do that thing where every time you spot this you can get a couple hundred bucks taken off the price or something that's going to be one thing you're going to want to notice uh I had to replace mine on here, so it's not like, oh, I lucked out. No, no, no. Mine wasn't leaking from right there. It was some other issues, but but mine was actually leaking. Now, I was gonna get my creeper out, go underneath the truck, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna climb underneath there on my back as if we're just in someone's driveway, and let's just go ahead and take a look what we got up here. Okay. Now you'll see we got some seepage. You see that? There's just a drip of oil right there. A little bit of seepage right there. Now we do know already that uh, there's no oil on the ground, so it's not actively dripping. Just a little bit, and I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. But you'll notice as we go up here, it's dry. The whole drain, the whole oil pan, you'll notice the oil pan is dry up there. The axle's very dry. This cross member right here is dry. It looks pretty good. I mean, in a perfect world, I would uh, I would like it to be completely dry, but that little bit of seepage is is okay. Again, depending on the price, how it runs, how many miles, all that stuff, uh, you're going to want to look at uh, the CV axles and minor split on both sides, and they have been ever since I bought it. Just never done anything about it. The inner, although oily, is fine. This CV axle boot over here is also split, and the inside is not. Just take a look up here. Let's take a quick look. You just want to see where it's oozing, dripping, seeping. And as we look up here, it's a little wet. Nothing major. The valve covers are known to leak, seep, be a little moist on these V6s. You'll see it's a little wet in there, but again, not dripping on the ground. There's your starter right there. I mean, nothing's been replaced recently at all. Your AC compressor. This is all all oh, been on here a long time climb under the passenger side we do have a cal we do have a catalytic converter this is a california vehicle and yeah it hasn't been stolen yet something you're definitely going to want to look at look at it is completely dry where the transmission meets the transfer case transfer case all looks good although very dry uh, like needs lubrication dry uh, everything looks pretty good down here. Let's go look at it from the other side. You can definitely see some some seepage or some some oil that's made its way, but it's covered in dirt. So it's been on here a long time. This is not actively leaking. Again, you'll see a little bit of seepage uh, where the engine meets the trans right up there, but no active leaks. Again, this truck has 205,000 miles and uh, I don't think it's had hardly any maintenance in its entire life. So you got the fuel filter right here. That needs to be changed. Look at these rockers. Look at underneath here. Super clean. 
Everything looks good. It's a good idea to grab the drive shaft, give it a pull, check for, uh, for play. There's absolutely none. Go back, grab the rear drive shaft, check it for play. Again, there's almost none. We'll go to the rear of the vehicle. The uh, rear axle housing, completely bone dry. U-joints look fine. Let's see if the uh, brake cylinders are leaking anything, if there's any. You're gonna wanna take a look at the back of the uh, drum housings on the back, see if there's any obvious leaking. If there is, you can see it on the back, on the back of the wheel, on the tire also. Rear axle housing's dry, bolts in, good. This side's dry also. I like to just do things like grab the shocks, give them a quick, give them a quick tug, just to see if there's any play. There is actually a little bit of play on the top there. I mean, what we're checking for is just, just rust, loose bolts, things they didn't tell you about. Wouldn't be uncommon to grab a shock and you know find out that the whole shock, that the whole shock tab mount at the top is just loose or hanging. This vehicle is cold right now. Check the exhaust. It's cold, so it's fine. Grab the exhaust, give it a good shake. Feels good. Give the gas tank a wiggle. E-brakes looking good. And as we turn around, I, I found something that uh, would definitely be a little concerning to me. Looks like at some point somebody put a whole uh, U-Haul A whole U-Haul towing a wiring plug back here. So this would definitely make me want to check the uh, brake lights, turn signals, and make sure everything's working good because this does not look too pretty at all. You'll notice there's a decent, and I mean a decent, is heavy amount of rust inside that back bumper. But as I'll show you guys in a minute, uh, that bumper is definitely not the uh, OEM one that came on the truck. So. This thing was outsourced from a rust bucket. Has a tow hitch on it. Dual exhaust. You'll notice the uh, you'll notice this hanger is just just. Oh, look at it. it! Used to go to this tab right here. Wow. So that's gone. Basically, the exhaust is just sandwiched in between the bumper. Same goes for this side. Yeah. Look at the hanger over here. It's just gone. Also. Oh, look at there is a spare tire holder and that's something you actually want to check for if this whole thing's missing that's gonna suck if you want to uh, get that in later actually it's not gonna suck but you'll have to order it up and put it in and who knows why it's missing it's probably because something else is missing it also you're gonna need these two pieces right here that uh, keep the tire in the right spot so that's that's pretty cool that's still on there I always think it's important and recommend undoubtedly to check the oil see what the level is see what the oil looks like if the oil is absolutely black and neglected it's going to be a huge indicator of the rest of the maintenance history on the vehicle um, check the uh, check the radiator I replaced this radiator right here the radiator when I got it was was I it was just gross so I replaced the radiator I replaced the battery it's always good to check out when the battery this one's just a couple months old of course when I got it the battery you know what, I don't even think this thing came with a battery when I bought it, come to think of it, but uh, if all the fluids are topped off, again, I replaced the clutch cylinder, so that one's good. The master cylinder is completely topped off over there. Go ahead and check the power steering fluid. Just make sure that the, there's fluid up at the top in there. Perfect. Go ahead and make sure the radiator is completely cold and go ahead and take the radiator cap off and just make sure you see fluid in there. This stuff takes the pink from the factory. I highly doubt you'll still see pink Toyota fluid in there. It'll probably be green. That's fine as long as it has something in there. Oh yeah, this is what I'm talking about right here. It's pink. That's the good stuff right there. I put the OEM in there. It is very expensive stuff, but works good. 
Also, um, these, these hoses, as soon as I got it, brought this thing home, it had been sitting for so long, it started leaking the next day. I just went and, this is not the OEM hose clamp. It uses these kind of hose clamps. Um, you're not supposed to use these. I did, I'm not happy about it, but um, if the vehicle's been sitting for a while, like this thing was, you'll probably have to tinker with a couple things, but oil looks great. All the fluids are great. Moving on to the fourth most important thing you got to ask about now it depends what state you're in we're in california right here is going to be the smog and if you guys remember from when i first got this thing the smog was an absolute nightmare this thing would not pass smog the check engine light was on when i bought it and it's because it needed a vapor pressure sensor i found that vapor pressure sensor for like 60 dollars on ebay put it in and then the next dilemma was doing the drive cycles to clear the computer to get it to smog that was a nightmare because the registration was expired i did not own the truck yet i had not done any of the paperwork and i couldn't do any of the paperwork and i'm supposed to drive this thing around this thing screams pull me over and i'm supposed to go put hundreds of miles on this thing in various driving conditions that sucks so if the vehicle has been smogged in the last 90 days you are good if it has not um, then they're probably going to tell you like oh yeah it'll smog just fine i just haven't gotten around to it you know what Half the time I tell them, let's go together. Okay, let's go together right now. We'll go get it smogged. If it, if it smogs, then I'll either pay you full price. I'll pay you your asking price if you love the vehicle or, or, or we'll work something out. But it's really important. And the thing is, if it doesn't pass smog, then just get in your vehicle and, and drive back home. Because unless you wanna deal with that, again, unless you're getting an absolute smoking deal or, or you know what the repairs or something, to buy one of these that needs a smog, or has the check engine light on, or has some sort of issue, that is a huge can of worms I don't think most people wanna get into. So smog is going to be huge. And if it's been smogged, then that seller actually has an advantage. So if the price is good, swoop it up before somebody else does, because that is a huge uh, hurdle that's already completed here in California. So number four is smog. I used to go buy vehicles um, and there was something that like was a clear indicator I needed to just walk away and I would never listen. I would always buy that vehicle and take it home. I bought a big old lifted Toyota like this one time um, that didn't have uh, power steering. No, like it, it, it's not that it was broken. It, it didn't have power steering. And, uh, and I thought I could overcome that. That was a huge mistake. I told you guys I bought a 400 once, a really nice 400 Limited and it turned out it had rust all over it. Um, I've bought vehicles before that I did not know were in collisions. I bought vehicles that needed to be smogged. I've bought vehicles, you name it, I've done it. I've made almost every mistake in the book. Um, and that's why I'm able to identify these things. And listen, there's a lot of vehicles out there. I would say it's easier to just be patient and get what you want, find the right vehicle, than it is just to get the wrong vehicle and try and repair it to where you need. That's, that, that usually rarely pays off like that. But um, a couple things that I, I do really like, uh, if, if again, we're, we're doing a car buy right now, I would ask if they have the wheel lock. I would, I would notice that there's wheel locks on here. Hey, do you have the wheel locks? They'd say, yeah, it's in the glove box. If I looked in there and saw the little wheel lock key, I'd be super excited about that. Um, these tires and wheels look great. I'd be super happy about that. There's new shocks on it. Everything looks really clean in here. Very nice. You know, all the windows roll up all the way. There's nothing strange going on here. The side mirrors are intact. Everything looks good. New shocks in the back. No broken tail lights. Um, when I bought it, this thing, the uh, license plate lights were completely missing. There was no license plate lights whatsoever. And I didn't even notice that for a while. So uh, I would make sure that the license, light, license plate lights are on. Bumpers looking good. And, uh, and again, we got, a, we got a locking gas door which I prefer over a locking gas cap. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, you can tell that this whole side was, was repainted or has some body work done. You can see where they mated it to the uh, original gas cap innards right there. That is not that pretty. Uh, let's see here, do the, do the locks work? They do. Lock it, yep. Unlock it. Go ahead and check the windows. They roll down freely, yep. Door locks, door locks work. Yes, they do. Just little things, make sure the hood, make sure the hood latches. I'd stick my hand under there and make sure that has a good latch. Grills on tight. Headlights are in good. Everything's tight. 
Let's check this passenger side window also, door lock. We'll jump to the inside in a minute. Again, check the door lock over here. Nice. I do really like that it has a bed liner. I'd be a little curious of what's underneath that bed liner. So I wouldn't think it's weird at all if you came back here, took your flashlight, got a good look underneath there. Just check for any signs of really nasty rust. I'm sure people have bought trucks before with bed liners and it turned out there was just massive chunks of rust underneath that they didn't notice. This truck does not have that. Number five thing you gotta check. I'm just gonna label this one as how does it drive? How does it shift and how does it break? Um, this is actually a good uh, time to also check the air conditioning, heater, alignment. Um, if, the, if the person, listen, if it's like a you know Ram TRX or something's crazy expensive, I understand them not letting you do a test drive unless you have money or any of that stuff. Something like this, um, unless you look like a total creep, there's no reason why the person won't let you take it around the block, even with them. And you know, these days, mask up if you have to, I don't know, whatever. It's not a time to be picky, just get this over with, make sure it's a good vehicle and get it home but got to take it for a drive. Um, that's going to that's gonna absolutely tell you almost everything. All right, so at this point, let's just jump inside. We'll look, uh, point out a couple things you want to look for inside the cab. And then basically it just comes down to a test drive and then uh, let's talk about the numbers and maybe we can make a deal. But if this is going to be like your new daily driver, your primary vehicle, you're going to want to make sure that you feel comfortable in here. Now, when I bought this thing, I didn't feel comfortable in here. A rodent had died and melted into the carpet behind the seat. Um, I don't even know what, I think there was mold all inside here. Somebody had spray painted all, all the trim in here. It was, it was absolutely bizarre that the seat was covered in duct tape, window was smashed out. It had these, these huge subwoofers right here and when we pulled those out, there was like rat's nests underneath them. This thing was totally gross. Uh, this thing has been like pretty much just gutted, uh, completely cleaned, recarpeted, brand new seats and, uh, and gone over all new stereo. Every T100 in the entire world is missing these uh, on both sides for some weird reason. If you have those, consider yourself lucky. Uh, make sure that the seat belts retract. Make sure the seat belts retract because uh, that usually stops working and then you're just left with a big old pile of seat belt. That sucks and that's not a super quick and fun, easy repair. I would just really quick, just, just make sure it's, it's not leaking any sign. You're going to, you know, you'll notice a big discolored mark or weird smells, stuff like that. Make sure these windows pop out. I love these windows. That's pretty cool. Just that, just, just a quick, just a quick glance. The headliner looks really good. You know, make sure these are intact. The mirror is still there. I love to look in it. And again, not to be snoopy, just take a quick peek. Look at, we got the, uh, we got the wheel lock right there flashlight um, we actually changed out the cd player but the the vents are still in good shape they still work glove box tight i mean these are these are good indicators right here again replace the carpet already but i mean these these door panels seem better days but everything's checking out over here all right so the interior is is checking out for me the stocks work over here these seems to move freely cup holders there Thing looks pretty good no cracks in the windshield that's a big one right there because these are things you know like when you buy a vehicle usually the tires are completely bald or it has a cracked windshield usually if a vehicle needs nothing 99 percent of people aren't going to sell it most vehicles are for sale usually because they need something and even if it's something small the owner's like i, I don't want to deal with this so i'm going to sell it so it's very rare to find a vehicle where it's like it needs nothing and this is definitely a case uh, where this thing needs nothing currently, but when I bought it, it needed a lot. And I decided to uh, really take on a project with this thing. And, uh, but that's what I was looking for. But if that's not for you, then you're probably gonna have to pay a little bit more to get something that's complete. Now, I actually should have said something a little while ago. Um, usually about five minutes after getting there, I ask them, do you have the title? Do you have the title? You actually have the title? I don't necessarily need to like hold it and fine tooth comb it at that moment, but I just want to make sure you actually have a title. I can't, I, we went to go buy our OG Sequoia right there. We test drove it, fell in love with it. I mean, the thing was only a couple years old at like 60,000 miles. It's a beautiful vehicle from the original owners. And then they dropped the, uh, the bomb on us. So no, we don't have the title. We lost it. I was pissed. We left and then I went and looked at a couple other ones and then we came back and we actually went with them very nice couple to uh, AAA and figured out how to get a duplicate title. And it was worth going through that hassle, which is very strange because I don't like usually putting up with any BS, but 
would you have the title? I just asked me, do you have the title? Is it from this state? You know, can I just see it really quick? You know, make sure that it's, just make sure it's not a salvage title. Make sure it doesn't say, you know, actual mileage unknown. I've, I've, I've seen it all just really quick, clean title. And you know what? Normally a normal person will have the title and it'll be, it'll probably be folded up. It's a trifold piece of paper. Maybe it's a double fold. And usually they'll have it inside the actual envelope from the DMV. You know, you get an envelope in the mail and you kind of rip it open a little bit from the top. Well, the contents out, that's usually what it is. They usually have the title in the DMV piece of paper in the DMV envelope, um, but other people will have it, you know, all bunched up or it looks like it got wet or it's already halfway filled out. Don't do that. If you see super weird title stuff going on or they say it's already been filled out or there's any erase marks, white out, it looks weird, leave, leave, just walk away respectfully. Uh, but clean title is something you, you really want to ask about. You have the title on you. You know, if I present you with the cash, or can we do this today? I hate getting my, uh, getting my hopes up, getting excited about something, wasting my time crawling on the ground and then having the person get weird on me or present some weird stuff at the last minute. So back it up, just ask them, do you have the title? Anyways, I like this truck and uh, we're gonna go take it for a spin around the block and then I'm, I'm, ready to, I'm ready to make the guy an offer. I'm actually really into it. This is kind of what I've been looking for. So um, another question you're gonna wanna ask real quick um, and right when we bring up the topic of, hey, hey, can we go for a cruise around the block? Um, say, hey, hey, how many keys do you have for it? Cause you know what? 10 times out of 10, they're gonna hand you one key. All right, when I bought my Crew Max Tundra, that was like almost 30 grand. They presented me with one key. Um, I'm, I'm, I have been handed one key at the end of a car sale more than anybody I've ever known in my life. So fortunately, this is a super cheap key right here. This is not one of these modern chip keys, but ask them, hey, how many keys do you got? Now, if you're very lucky and it's an expensive SR5 model, they're gonna hand you the original uh, keyless entry fob and that's when you know you've struck gold. Um, that This thing never had that right here. Um, but if they say, yeah, I got two keys, say, oh, that's awesome. So. We got that going on. You know, another thing I'd look at real quick, super important on these older Toyota trucks. Um, God, this is so important. Back it up to the rust inspection. Um, you're gonna wanna check right here, right where uh, the, the rubber meets the windshield. That, this is a great spot where the bubbling starts up there. So just check that all the way across. This one's completely fine again, but just check these pieces. I've went and bought a lot of trucks before and the molding around the, the windshield was either missing or it was messed up or bent. Cause when they replace these windshields, it just beat the crap out of these window trim pieces. Um, so the fact that these are super clean, that's another thing you're gonna wanna look for too. I, I've bought in trucks that we're missing that top piece before and that can be kind of sketch also. All right, let's go for a cruise. But uh, before we do, let's make sure all the lights work real quick. So go ahead and turn the headlights on. Yeah, side marker lights work. Headlights are lit up. We're good. If you're by yourself and you're in a hurry to make sure the turn signal lights work, man, that is a sticky button right there. You can always just hit those four-way flashers and that'll give you an indicator if those turn signals are working and they are. I forgot to check them tail lamps earlier. Yep, tail lamps are working. If you want, you could have the uh, seller, if you're by yourself, just say, hey, real quick, brake lights work. I'm staying back there. I doubt he's gonna lie to you, uh, but just make sure all the lights are working. I would hate to buy a vehicle and go home and find out later on that night that the headlights don't work or something weird like that. First things first, just see how you feel. It's completely fine to go ahead and adjust the mirror inside, outside. Go ahead and get comfortable in that seat. There's not a lot of adjustments on these T100 seats, so not a lot we can do here. But first starters, go down here and just turn the radio down, okay? If, if somebody wants to listen to music or is insistent on some weird noise, keep you from hearing the engine, uh, then that's, that's not a good sign. Uh, so go ahead and fire it up, clutches in again. We got a squeaky clutch right there. We're going to have to fix that. E-brake works really good on this thing. That's another thing. I really like having a working e-brake. It's nice that the uh, airbag light isn't on. I don't know if you guys remember my lifted 95 I had just about a year, two years ago. I think I had an airbag light on. I was never able to get around to fixing that. Uh, if you're into it, go ahead and see if the AC works. 
this vehicle, uh, you can hear it right there. You can hear the compressor kick on. Actually took the belt off that goes to the compressor, but uh, go ahead and check, run the heat for a minute. Uh, run the AC for a minute. Go ahead and make sure all that stuff feels good. Check out the gauges. Uh, the oil pressure is is just great. That's exactly where you want it. As a matter of fact, you can see, and you know, when you drive it on this thing, it goes up and down. It, I wouldn't say it's 100% accurate. As you drive, you know, make make sure you keep an eye on the temp. Make sure the uh, gas gauge works. The volt gauge is up there. You know, the, everything's working. You want the steering wheel to be straight, not a lot of play in the wheel. You know, you guys have been doing this for a while. You kind of know what feels good and doesn't feel good. Make sure the vents, you can see this vent is actually broken right here. You see how it's supposed to, it's supposed to control the whole thing. This one just controls that. That's, that's okay. That's okay, we can live with that. Everything feels good. And we're just gonna take it, just a quick spin. If you can take it on the freeway, definitely do that. Um, but if you can't get up to super high speeds, if you just take it out a little bit and feel good about it, I don't think there's that much that the freeway can expose that other driving couldn't. The clutch feels really good. Make sure that, you know the clutch isn't letting out at the very end. You know, even if it is, um, I actually went with my sister one time to buy an Acura Integra, and the clutch was so bad we almost didn't make it home. Um, and people will sell you sell your vehicle all day long um, with clutch or brakes that are so bad that you can hardly make it home and they'll sell it to you with a straight face so I wouldn't put anything past anybody so don't think because somebody has a charming smile or they seem nice that they won't absolutely take your money and leave you hanging because they will absolutely it drives completely straight the steering is very responsive it's, uh, it's staying in first gear by itself. It's not popping out of any gears. You know, I'd be a little concerned um, with 25 year old automatic transmissions. Those concern me more than the manuals. Not that they're not decent transmissions, but anything that old with the fluid that old. So, you know, listen for weird noises. How does it shift? Shifts good. Shifts very good. Not a lot of clanking noises at all. I don't hear anything strange. Transmission feels good. All right, you notice the uh, temp gauge is starting to warm up. That is completely normal and expected. If it doesn't start to warm up for a long time, that's concerning. This would be a good opportunity to lean over and just turn the heater on really quick. Even if it's a hot day, just make sure it blows hot. Anyways, this thing, this thing rides really nice, accelerates really nice, brakes feel really good. So driving impressions, um, very good. As a matter of fact, if I was on a test drive right now, it would probably be everything I could do just to keep it together until I, we could get back to the house start working out a deal and I could just take off and get this thing home. That is the funnest thing right when you get home with a new vehicle and you have it in the driveway and it's a beautiful day and you don't have to go to work and you can just sit there and tinker with it and oh, that's, that is, that's a really good feeling. So at this moment I'd probably start thinking about what I was going to say when we get back to the house. Although I'm a decent negotiator, I, uh, it's really not my strong suit. I really don't like haggling with people. As a matter of fact, I'm one of those people, I'll, I'll find like a, a fair middle ground and I'm cool with that. I don't, I don't need to get the, get the advantage on anybody or get a, I don't know. I, I know some people that are like, they'll make it unpleasant, which is, which is understandable because time is money. Hey, nice T100, buddy. Give it a little gas. Yeah, picks up. You know, I've been selling vehicles before and I'm uh, on a test drive and I'm sitting in passenger seat and I've had some people really open it up, really do some crazy stuff that I thought was a little inappropriate for being on a test drive. But then, you know, other people have that attitude, you know, if I'm going to buy it from you, then I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm really going to put my foot in it or this and that. And that is understandable, but just, just, I don't need the attitude about it. It's still my baby and you can probably just walk away, you know. Um, 
I don't know, I'm sure there's a middle ground or a gray area there or something, but... But anyways, this is when the person would tell me I can go left and then just follow it around the block. I got a new neighbor right here. Somebody just bought the house for a million bucks, literally. And this dude has a killer forerunner. It has all king suspension. We are back. Let's go ahead and park this thing and then talk business. Now this video is not how to haggle. It's not how to get the deal. This was just about the checklist. So even though this vehicle definitely has a few shortcomings and, and things, um, you know, nothing of concern. The thing drives fantastic, runs fantastic. The smog is done. Uh, it's all there. So I would say go ahead and make an offer. He wants 12,000. I'm going to hit him with 10 grand. See if he'll go for it. Does anybody remember that show, uh, Wheeler Dealer? Just to go haggle with people and then uh, he'd come back super excited. I can just picture his face right now because that's what I want to do. Okay. Yes? Top work. Deal. Yes? We got the offer 10,000 bucks and he went for it. So we're super excited. We shook hands and uh, we're taking this thing home today. Couldn't be happier. Really happy you guys came out with me today and went over it. And, uh, and this is exactly what it would look like if I went to someone's house to buy a vehicle. Those are all the things I would check out. You'll be so much happier that you did take the time to, uh, to go over all that. Cause I, I have just been, let's just get this thing home. Especially when I go out of town, I drive a couple hours to look at a car. The whole thing I'm thinking about is, man, we are gonna have to deal with traffic on the way home. Uh, and I let my mind get somewhere else. And I'm usually always hungry. So in addition to the, uh, the towel and the uh, flashlight, go ahead and bring a granola bar also, because you're gonna wanna take your time. Don't buy the wrong vehicle. Of course, right when I'm buttoning it up, an airplane has to fly over, right? Probably one of the longest videos I've ever made, ever. But this is your buying checklist, and it's pretty universal for any vehicle that you buy. But especially for Toyotas, it doesn't matter whether it's an old-school T100, a Tacoma, a Tundra. This is pretty much what I would recommend to look for for every vehicle. And uh, the only thing left to do is go put some gas in it and live happily ever after. Go register it, get that over with as soon as you get it, get it all squared away and get on uh, with your life. This is the buying checklist, the what to do um, when you go to go buy a vehicle, private party uh, or from a dealership. If you're new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing. Everybody drop a big old thumbs up and I will see everybody soon. Peace.